I want to share with you a quick activity I do with my clients to help decrease anxiety and to increase the sense of safety and calm. I use this activity all the time in session with my clients and you can feel a noticeable difference almost immediately. So this activity is short and simple, but it can really help decrease anxiety because what it does is help you clarify what you can and what you can't act on. Because I mean, that's what worry is, right? I mean, it's thinking about a problem over and over again to see if there's a different solution or something you should be doing differently. So this activity is all about understanding your locus of control and it's really simple, but you can use it with lots of situations. Um, I use it in marriage therapy. You can use it with um, understanding problems with a coworker or um, fears about the future. But the important part is that you draw it out on paper because there's something about drawing that helps the brain clarify problems and clear up anxiety better than just thinking about problems. So what you're going to do is you're going to start by drawing two intersecting circles on a piece of paper like this. Woo, those are great circles. And um, write your problem or your question at the top of the page. So in this situation, we're going to be uh, using the example of parents who are um, upset that they have an adult child living at home and that kid is not motivated. So um, then in this circle, you're going to label what is um, in your control. And on the circle, you're going to label what's out of your control. And this middle section, this where the where the circles overlap, this is your realm of influence. Um, and we're going to talk about that more uh, later. Okay, so let's start with what's out of your control. So these parents, they've got an adult child who's living at home and they're frustrated that their kid isn't going to college, doesn't have a job and doesn't seem motivated. And they are really frustrated. So they're putting a lot of energy into being upset about her lack of motivation and they keep trying to get her to change. So if we start with what's out of the parent's control, they can't control whether their child is motivated. They can't control whether she gets a job. They can't control whether she goes to college. They can't control if she goes to therapy. And they really, they can't control the outcome. They can't control whether in the long run their child is successful or not, right? Now, what's in their control? They are in control of their own money. They're in control of their own property, right? They can control their house and they can, they can choose if it's an adult child, whether she can be in their house or not, right? They can control their boundaries. They can control what they say. They can control what they do. They can control what skills they learn. Like if they learn parenting skills, specifically parenting skills for working with a young adult. And they can control what they teach and how they teach. Now let's talk about this realm of influence, right? So we, there are some things we can do that are going to influence other people's actions, but don't control other people's actions. So there's a lot of ways to influence and I'm going to list some of them. Not all of these are the best ways of doing it, but I'm just going to give you some ideas of what influence looks like, right? So influence can be explaining influence can be, um, requesting, like making a request. Will you please do this? Right. Um, influence can be begging or pleading. Um, influence can be setting boundaries. That's one of my favorites. So for example, uh, if you don't get a job by next month, then you may not live here. Or if you would like to live here, these are the expectations. Right? So these are examples of how we can influence other people. And these things are going to influence the outcome, but they still don't control the outcome. So when I work with these parents, I'm going to encourage them to stop putting their energy into this area that's not in their control, right? Trying to change their child, trying to control the outcome for their child. And instead, I'm going to encourage them to put as much of their energy as possible into their influence and into their realm of control right? So instead of focusing on changing their child, they're going to focus on setting boundaries and what they say and do and how they set examples and skills and teach and things like that. And this is all about putting your efforts into the process instead of the outcome. 
right? So the process is this process of, of influence, of teaching, of trying to change, of trying to be a better person. And that means engaging your efforts and actions into things you can do now and into the things that are going to be most helpful. So for example, begging and requesting might not be as helpful, but boundaries might be. Now we can also use this for pretty much any kind of stressful thing that's in our life. So for example, you could use it with the 2020, you know, coronavirus pandemic, right? And just really quickly, we're going to talk about what that would look like. Okay. So what's in my control? I can inform myself. I can choose whether to wear a mask. I can choose what level of social distancing I'm going to do or not do. I can choose what I'm going to do to support my local healthcare workers or other essential workers. I can also choose to improve my own health, right? I can choose to um, exercise and I can choose to eat healthy and, you know, have good nutrition and, and things like that, right? And what's out of my control? I can't control others' actions. I can't control whether they social distance. I can't control whether they wear masks. I can't control whether those masks cover their noses. I can't control some risk factors like um, age or other, you know, factors. Um, and I, I can't control the government, what the government chooses, right? I can't control whether my state has a mask mandate or not, but I can influence that by voting. I can influence that by talking with people. I can influence that by how I use social media, whether I use that for good or evil. <laughs> how I contribute to the public discourse is really my influence on that. And then also the example I set. Okay. So that's one way we can apply this, this cycle to what's going on with the COVID-19 pandemic. So what this diagram is really about is about where am I going to put my energy and where am I going to put my focus? right? So um, am I going to spend a lot of time getting upset about what other people are doing and whether their masks cover their nose holes? Am I going to put a ton of energy into complaining about other people or being upset about other people's choices? Or am I going to put my energy and my focus into this process, this process of dialogue or this process of improving myself and learning new skills or this process of, you know, taking care of what's in my realm of control? And and often the best thing you can do is focus on the process, right? So with those parents of that, you know, girl who won't leave home, they should be focusing on their process of setting boundaries and having conversations and developing skills instead of just hyper-focusing on the outcome that they want, right? Her being successful, independent adult. And same thing goes with, you know, our response to the coronavirus pandemic. Are we going to focus on what other people are doing and what drives us crazy about what they're doing? Or the things that are out of our control, right? We can't control the case count and the number of deaths directly. We can, we can most directly impact the people around us by choosing what level of social distancing we're going to do and whether or not to wear a mask and to wash our hands a lot. When you take the time to clarify your role, to make it really concrete what you can change and what you can't change, then you're able to let go of that stupid, anxious uncertainty that's all about not being sure of what you should be doing. Anyways, I hope this activity was helpful. Thank you for watching and take care. This video was sponsored by BetterHelp, where you can receive professional, affordable online counseling for around $65 a week. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description for 10% off your first month.